Thank you. Good morning and welcome to uh, Council of Staff and um, members of the Public Gallery. Feder Federation Council wishes to advise members of the Public Gallery that Council meetings will be recorded and will be available after each meeting on Council's website. All care will be taken to maintain the privacy of those in attendance. However, as a visitor in the Public Gallery, your presence may be recorded. By remaining in the Public Gallery, it is assumed your consent is given in the event your image is broadcast. This includes any filming by television cameras if attendance is approved by the manager or mayor. In accordance with the clause 3.25 of the Council's Code of Meeting Practice, councils are reminded of their oath or affirmation or office made under Section 233A of the Act to faithfully and impartially carry out the functions, powers, authorities and discretions vested under their Local Government Act. 1993, or any other act to the best of their ability and judgment, and their obligations under Council's Code of Conduct to disclose and appropriately manage conflicts of interest. I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land we meet, where we meet today, the Bangarang and Muratri people, and acknowledge the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people who now reside in this area. I extend that respect to Elders, past and present, of the Bangarang nations. We now item number three. I'll call for apologies or applications for leave of absence by councillors. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. There's a recommendation in the minutes for apologies from Councillor Candy and Nichols, but just noting Councillor Nichols is um, attending. So, <coughs> excuse me, Councillor Candy's already been granted leave of absence. So, just note that apology. Right, would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Whitechurch, second by Councillor Hughes. All in favour? Against, carried. Okay, items 3.2, application for remote attendance. So that's now not applicable. That was in force if we were to have the meeting in Kyra as an ordinary um, open full meeting and if anyone um, was able to log in or required to with access or other issues, um, that was provided. And then with the flooding now of Kyra Civic meeting, we can't even get in to use that meeting room, it's what you call a full virtual now, so everyone's um, virtual with a few of us here in person still working virtually, so there's no need to um, have any applications, so I'll just put that as not applicable. Okay, thank you. 4.1, disclosures of interest. Uh, haven't received any. All right. Mayoral Minute, number five. Item number five. Uh, just with that Mayoral Minute, I... It would be remiss if I didn't mention the work that's been carried out by our two LAMO officers here, um, Susan and Steve, over the past lot of months, um, meetings every week and, and all the work that's going on out in the field. So um, on behalf of Council and, and, of course, our ratepayers, I'd like to thank them for all the work they've done and that they'll hopefully continue to do. Um, obviously, this season there's plenty more to do and there's a lot in front of us with the expected um, large amounts of water coming into our areas in the next few days. So thank you very much for that. And um, I'd just also like to note that um, uh, Councillor Fay, it was great to be part of the motion at the ALGA conference in Hobart uh, to secure funding for New South Wales Council's future road funding. Um, there was a motion moved there, so uh, it was great to be part of that uh, movement in our efforts to try and get some more financial assistance that we, will be needed uh, in, in our uh, very near future. So thank I've just you. got uh, Councillor Longley on the... I'd like to make a comment. I, I think our outdoor staff need a great big pat on the back for the amount of work they put in, particularly over here, in, in extraordinary circumstances, and um, uh, they're a credit to uh, our council. Thank you, Councillor Longley. If there's no more, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Um, sorry, can I have a move of that, please? Moved by Councillor Bay, seconded by Councillor Black. All in favour? Against, carried. Right, I will now move on to the general manager's report. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Item 6.1 is the draft councillor expenses and facilities policy are recommended for exhibition. So in the attachments is the revised policy. So council has to have in place um, a policy that outlines 
uh, what expenses will be covered by council, as in reimbursed to council laws carrying out their civic duties, as well as what facilities will be um, available. Not all provided, but um, available on request as well. So that document's required to be reviewed within 12 months of the election, and that includes exhibition. So this document, this policy is here <coughs> before council with a recommendation to go out an exhibition and bring that back to the December 2022 ordinary meeting to adopt the final policy, considering any submissions, etc. Would someone like to move that, please? I'd like to move that with an amendment. Thanks. Thank you, Councillor Fay. And a seconder. Probably pro. Oh. Do you want to propose your amendment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. actually. Yeah, well, just the amendment now, I intend to put in a written submission into it anyway, but I just noticed that um, travel's capped at $2,000 per annum. If I do my 12 meetings only, um, my reimbursement would be 2350 Like, I didn't choose to be at the northern end of the shop. I didn't make the boundaries. And I think there should be some leeway for that to be increased because I go to more than 12 meetings when I go over to um, over to Corowa. Um, also, the IT expenses, I don't see any... Um, scope in there for internet. Um, currently I use my own home internet service which really frustrates me when I get dodgy emails from council and I have to pay to, for the privilege. And also uh, in the mayor's having to have a logbook, I think that's a little bit over the top. Um, you know, everywhere that the mayor goes, everyone's always talking something council business. So as far as I'm concerned, the use of that car is always used for council. Um, you're either lobbying or some will want to talk about some issue through council. As far as I'm concerned, that's council business. So they're just three items that I will do a written submission in, whether you want to put the amendment in now. Um, the written submission will be in more detail, but they're the three things that just shone out to me. It's interesting. We come back from conference uh, down in Tasmania. You talk to other regional councillors around Australia. Um, I think that the poorest one was getting $65,000 a year and up to $220,000 a year. New South Wales are the poor cousins when it comes to uh, councillor expenses. Um, you definitely don't get in the local government to make any money as a councillor. Uh, you do it more for your community. So just with that in mind, it's just these small adjustments I think need to be made um, to at least cover our actual costs. It's uh, not extravagant and I don't think it's uh, out of this world to ask for that. Would someone like to move that amendment? Moved by Council Whitechurch. So we've got Councillor Faye's moved the amendment. Um, the second uh, was Councillor Whitechurch. So <coughs> situation's going to be how do we amend that um, and place that on exhibition in time, um, yeah, other than making points now in that resolution about those three yeah, matters? Yeah, just, just those three matters I'm concerned about. And, and like I say, whether you want to, doesn't have to be specific today, but when it comes up to council, I'll have a written submission in, Joe. What, won't cost too much, Joe. <laughs> and kind of detailing those things that there needs to be a little bit more leeway to actually cover, you know, your actual costs. And we you deal with that with the option B, wouldn't you? Yeah, option B in the, res in the yeah. recommendation says to adopt with changes. But this, the situation is still going to be how do we rework all that mm. um, at this in this amendment uh, because of those amount. Of so through the chair, I'm happy to do it however you like, or if you just want to take option one and put it through, or whatever you whatever you presume to do. But uh, Councillor Nichols, question. Councillor Nichols. Sorry, Councillor Nichols, your microphone is turned off. Yak anyway here. Thank you. Uh, on page four of the draft policy, um, there's an allowance of a total of $4,000 for council to attend the LG New South Wales Annual Conference and the National General Assembly. How many people does that um, account for in attendance? Um, and the reason I'm saying it is that several other local council ORs um, attending from urban areas have great opportunity to go to this conference because they don't have the tyranny of distance. Um, I would like to see more of our councillors have the opportunity to go to that annual conference and I'm just concerned that $4,000 as a total is pretty tight. Councillors, can I make a suggestion on this because um, obviously there's, there's some debate that needs to be had. Uh, if we went ahead and adopted it as is, exhibited, exhibited, exhibited as is, and then we um, we then bring in these other options before we adopted at the final council meeting in December. Would you be happy with that? 
As long as we can discuss it before we adopt it, sure. Yeah, absolutely. And and I just want to comment on those expenses areas, and that's the OLG, the Oxlow Government Templates, you know, guidance document talking about putting these thresholds in a document, and I've made notes in the policy um, intending to reflect the fact that uh, it can't be that rigid because we have a budget which allows for changes, whether it be councillor expenses or a new bridge somewhere. So we can't really tie ourselves into a policy um, setting as strongly as that when our budgets are very limited for councillor expenses, but practically as councillor Nichols has raised or IT like councillor Fay or travel. Um, so that was one thing I saw straight away. <clears throat> and other councils haven't. Um, some have um, put their exact amounts in. Mm. Others have left it very broad still. Mm. Uh, so I think, yeah, as suggested, we go in exhibition, we um, have the public comments as well. And regardless, we have to adopt a policy by end of year and then we consider what other um, issues are around that. Yep. So I'll go back to, if councils are happy with that, I'll go back to Councillor Fay. Would you I'll like to go through with me as option one? And and I did have a seconder. That was Councillor Whitechurch. Whitechurch. Yeah. Any further questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it all in favour. So I'm sorry. sorry. <coughs> Just for, for clarity, I think I was seconding the amendment. I don't think that option one was mentioned as the motion, was it? Um, what we've done, we've got rid of the the movers. Happy to um, go, to the go, go the original motion. Yeah, that's right. Um, and the idea of that is so that it can be um, go yeah, out. I'm sure yeah. whether we have that noted. Yep. Yeah. No. So we've all still got opportunities for put in a submission. Mm -hmm. All right. So um, nothing further. I'll put it again. All in favour? Right. Against? Carry. Thank you. Six point two. Council is in favour. Councillors is the draft strategic asset management plan and recommendation for exhibition and the state of our council infrastructure assets report also recommended for exhibition. So the recommendation there is to note the report and the attachments being the draft Federation Council strategic asset management plan and the state of assets report. Place both those documents on exhibition 21 days and then receive a further report at the December meeting, including consideration of any submissions to adopt the final asset management plan. So if there's a mover and a second, they're happy to talk to that. Would someone like to move that, please, councillors? Moved by Councillor Fay, seconded by Councillor Black. Any questions or comments there, councillors? Councillor Nichols. Uh, thank you. Can I assume that it's the same scenario as the last motion that we can add further comment after exhibition because there's a few things that um, I've read through in the document that I want to talk to? Absolutely. And, and, you, and you're welcome to make a uh, comment now if you like, but I would imagine that'd be the best way forward. Okay, thank you. So, just briefly, if I could talk to this report, this represents an enormous amount of work, and I guess modernising the two former councils' asset management documentation framework. Uh, and I want to pay a special um, thanks to the staff, many staff, directors, um, and managers, especially who have worked through both sets of um, data uh, and performed, um, I think, a really big job to pull this into a. Uh, a really readable um, information document. So the two reports, the state of the assets report is specifically uh, designed as well for a really key document to inform community, to allow people to really understand where um, the whole state of the assets lie across the council. Uh, and then the asset management plan updated. Uh, it's a requirement of our integrated planning framework anyway to have a resourcing strategy, which includes asset management plan, a workforce plan and your long-term financial plan, um, those key areas within the, um, the asset management plan especially are really critical. Um, they've broken them up into our asset classes and really highlighting where um, the challenges are with um, asset age and condition and obviously performance. So really um, key piece of work leading into the end of the year. Um, it forms a lot of the, I think, the backbone around our need for the special rate variation. And I think as a council, um, it's like, plenty of other things that the council does. They've tackled it head on. They want to put things out there um, that really paint the picture of um, it's not a doom and gloom. It's probably where the whole country is in terms of their assets, but we want to put it into a format where it's a tool that can then inform future councils and future generations around how we um, work towards our asset repair. So we've talked a lot about roads, but with water, sewer, um, they're all separate funds, water and sewer, but there's, this document catches all that. 
and every year it'll be updated and improved as our asset data uh, continues to change and as our conditions continue to impact our assets, obviously, like right now. Um, but, yeah, I really wanted to put a, um, a thank you out there to all the staff that have worked so hard on it. Councils have been through workshops on this as well. And, and really, it's the start of a journey when we talk about our longer-term um, picture for our infrastructure. And it's, I think it's a really great time to have all this out there for um, people to really fully consider that we haven't forgotten about stormwater or we're not worrying about water um, whilst other assets are getting built. I think it's a, a really key tool. Um, I'm keen for the exhibition period um, and then adoption. So, just me. Thank you, Councillor Fay. Yeah, through the chair, just wanted to comment. Uh, it was very interesting down at the uh, conference in Tasmania. Um, Alga did a state of the assets for nationwide, and uh, and I've got that as part of my report of coming normal council meeting. But it was very pleasing to note that they said uh, I think a third of only a third of councils had their asset management plans and all their long term financial plans completed or linked together. And it was very pleasing that we could say well, we're one of those councils that has done that. So we're well in front of it. Many other councils, not just in New South Wales, but right around Australia. So it was a great, great uh, thanks and great job from the staff. It's really good. Thank you, Councillor Fay. Any further comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Right. Against? Carried. Okay. All three. Okay. Um, Six point three is on water and sewer pricing. So this has had a couple of <coughs> changes around the timing, really. So the government has come up with a, a proposed um, prudent financial management sound pricing uh, structure. So a report there seeking submissions um, from councils. So recommendation here is to note the report on the water and sewer pricing, sound pricing and prudent financial management and support a submission to government um, on that and using the information from our current growth strategy work as well as our asset management um, plan we just spoke of in that previous report um, to put forward, I guess, where the real situation is um, with council. Uh, and what the, I think the government's intent here is to flag to those councils that aren't particularly addressing head-on or, or other water utilities like county councils, um, the future growth challenges as well as maintaining the current um, customers that use all that network. So we want to make sure it's a very short window to to get a submission in, but anything that comes across our desk like that, we want to be um, make sure we're front and centre with that. We have found in the past when we do make noise or the community does make noise, like how long, um, as a great example, where the how long community group um, as well got behind the issue of how long's water supply, um, Kyra sewerage as well, got a lot of, um, I suppose, headlines with the big subdivision that was refused by the court, and those things only actually helped to raise the issues with infrastructure and then... It's uh, not surprising then that government agencies sometimes reach out to council and says, oh, I didn't know that was an issue. How can we assist? So we just want to um, make sure we're in the picture on this one as well. Thank you. Would someone like to move that, please? Moved by Councillor Nichols, seconded by Councillor Law. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Aye. Against? Harry. Thank you. So, uh, 7.1. Yeah, that's over in Joe's area. Yes, we'll move now back to Shannon, 7.1. Thanks, Thank thanks, Mr. Manager. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, good morning, councillors. Uh, agenda item 7.1 relates to authorizations under the swimming pools act of 1992 so with the appointment of a new senior building surveyor janai um, holland uh, were required to appropriately authorize her to undertake her functions under that act thank you very much so Dave, uh, as before you thanks joe dropped in and out a little bit there but i got the gist of it would someone like to move that please moved by councillor law Second by Council Whitechurch. Any questions or comments, councillors? If not, I'll put it. All in favour? Aye. Against? Aye. Carried. Oh, sorry, Rowan, Council Black. Did you have a question or comment? Okay, Aye. thank you. And uh, thank you, Joe. Now we have no items for Director of Development and Engineering Services. So, and Moved to number 10, <clears throat> notice of motion. 
We have 10.1 notice of motion, live traffic.com. Moved by Councillor Fay. Councillor Fay, would you like to talk to that motion? I'm going to get a second. Well, I'll get a, I've, we've got a move seconded by Councillor Black. Councillor yeah, thank, Fay. Uh, thanks, Mr Mayor, um, and thanks for allowing this late, late uh, item. Um, as lots of people would be aware, and I'm sure it's happening all over the Shire and all over the state, we had uh, a few incidences at Miranda where we've got B-doubles coming down road, closed roads. Um, other trucks actually drove in a flood water and, and got stuck and had to do a fast water rescue, etc. Um, the information on, and we've had this issue back in 2020, uh, 2012, where they don't list for local roads. And their argument is that, oh, well, should, council should list them, which I agree. But if you're a general traveller travelling through the state, how do you know what shire you're in, where to go to? So it's a, a lot of the information is inaccurate. So the Newell Highway currently is blocked off from Gerildry to uh, Narandra, where from the Federation Way to Gerildry there's no water and hasn't been any, and that would have been an alternate route. As the water comes down, different routes open up. Um, even this morning on ABC Radio, people are saying, oh, yeah, go to lifetraffic.com to find your alternate routes. It's inaccurate and not up to date. So therefore, people go to social media, which is just a nightmare waiting to happen because just because someone drove through a road, they possibly may not have, uh, shouldn't have driven through, but that, you know, goes out on social media, yeah, you can go that way and that's where people get into trouble. Um, anecdotally, I hear that they're looking at to review their live traffic, um, especially the New South Wales side in January. As far as I'm concerned, this issue with flooding and the, and the roads blocking is going to go on for many, many weeks. And it's a matter of urgency. We need something to be done and get through the bureaucracy that it's, I'm not an IT expert, but I don't think it'd be too hard to touch a screen and say that road's actually not there. So um, our road that's totally washed away, probably 10 or 12 foot deep at, at uh, Marunda, is still showing as being an open thoroughfare. And that's why we're still getting people through driving around road closed signs because they've looked on live traffic as they've been told by um, no by the media and everyone else that go to them, that's a reliable data and it's inaccurate. And I think it's just a disaster waiting to happen. It's a wonder people haven't had more instances as it is. It's not much cost just to write to letters to our, the people I've listed on here and, um, you know, get, get some action sooner rather than later. It's something that needs to happen right now. Thank you, Councillor Fay. Any further questions or comments here, councillors? Would you like to comment there, Alana, as our manager of comms on the work you've done and then the possibility of doing some work with our own mapping layers? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Aid. Um, so based on the discussion from Councillor Fay just then and in previous meetings that we've had over the last couple of weeks uh, with the flood, we're actually investigating our own mapping tool now because like Councillor Fay, we see the urgent need for it. Uh, the content that we have on our website is constantly being updated, but there's a big gap between what we're putting out there on local roads and then what is being missed from a state road perspective. Um, so we're investigating that now. We've reached out to our friends at Murray River Council who have implemented an intramap system. Um, so looking forward to getting that up and running. But like Councillor Fay says, you know, in times like this, we need to be promoting a central source of information like what live traffic do and all the radio stations, all your media outlets, your lead agencies are promoting that. Um, seems to work really well for the cities, but we need it to work out here for us as well. Thank you, Mrs Greenwood. Any further questions or comments, councillors? Can I make a yes, comment on absolutely. that? Um, over the last two weeks at the regional control, they have been discussing live traffic with Transport for New South Wales. It has been an issue across the entire region, western region of New South Wales. So uh, it's very well highlighted and, and this motion will help hopefully push that forward as a, a key issue. Excellent. Excellent. Well, if that's all, councillors... And staff, I'll, I'll put it. Councillor Nichols, did you have a? Sorry, yeah. one one last minute. Um, what does the interface between New South Wales and Victoria looks like? I look like because there's so much conversation of how do I get to Wangaratta? How do I get to Albury? How do I get to Wodonga? Um, for border towns, particularly Howlong and Corowa, um, where is the best place for the general public to go to to get information that's linked up between the two states? Given that we have to traverse the border to get to either one of the towns. Again, again, that was an issue that's been raised at regional control. Uh, and to answer the question, there isn't a clear there isn't a clear point to go to at this stage. Mm -hmm. um, the cross-border commissioners have been involved with the meetings uh, since the event started, especially around Pachuca Moama. So 
yeah, to be honest, it's overwhelming at the moment, the impact on the road network and on the number of towns and villages. So, yeah, it's, yeah, they're working on it. Councillor Longley, someone there. And um, thank you, Councillor Nichols. Councillor Longley, did you have a comment? No, it was me this time. Um, in terms of our communications, uh, Councillor Nichols, we're encouraging people um, to go to Vic Traffic um, if they're doing cross-border travel um, and also check local council websites on the other side as well because my understanding is that they're having the same issue as what we are on the New South Wales side. Thank you. Yeah. It'd be certainly great if we had a universal federal type live traffic.com. Councillor Whitechurch, did you have a... Yeah, just echoing everybody's words. Um, at the end of the day, they can't handle it and they can't do it. Um, I've had two elderly people, including my mother yesterday, who couldn't get an answer on whether a train or a bus was running from Melbourne. Um, the bus company and V-Line and everyone couldn't tell her what was happening from Wangaratta to Corowa. Um, she ended up doing her own research on online to get the answers. And I mean, you've only got to look at the, the traffic lights on the bridge at Corowa. Um, They've received over 70 complaints that the, the person told me about the timing of the bridge, and there's been two head-ons there in the last two weeks. One was a near miss, clipped the car, and the other hit the other day. Um, people just running those lights. And they, there's no communication and nothing happening at all about it. So, you know, I'd be more than happy to see us doing our own stuff in our own area because they're failing badly. And does that perhaps, and I couldn't agree more, Sean, um, does that look like a, a, a greater interface with Indigo, for example? And what are we doing in that space? How are they communicating with us and vice versa? It was nice to see that they shared pretty much the same information at the same time the other day about John Ford Bridge, but that's the first bit of information in a very, very long time where we can see a bit of collaboration. Yeah. Well, the lady on the phone knew the light number before I told me. She said, I know the light number is 3336. Yeah. Well, you know, it's pretty sad. But anyway, another issue, another day. Yeah, for sure. So, is there any further comments, um, councillors, before I put that? If not, I'll put it all in favour. Again, uh -huh. carried. Thank you. Item number 11, there's no confidential matters. And um, you all have a have a great week. Thanks for your attendance to everyone. And that concludes our meeting today. Thank you.